As it still includes the design of web openings in white flange members, sometimes it's necessary to perforate the web of the beam to pass pipes, ducts, or other utilities. But how do you check the structural capacity of a beam without web opening? How do you check if the beam needs to be reinforced? And if so, how do you reinforce it? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're gonna design a composite beam with a web opening. It's a W18 by 60. The concrete slab is five and a half inches thick, over three inches metal deck. The beam is loaded with two concentrated loads, 45 kips at the thirds of the span. The opening is 10 by 24, and the goal is to check the structural adequacy of this beam with the opening in two locations. One, at the center of the span, where the shear is zero, and the moment is maximum, and two, in one of the end thirds, where the shear is maximum, 45 kips, and the moment is smaller. The maximum moment is 600 kip feet, maximum shear is 45 kips. So let's get started. When you open ASIP steel, you see the modules included in the package, base plates with anchorage, steel columns, steel and composite beams, shear connections, moment connections, and web openings. In this case, we want to create a calculation for a web opening. Let's call it example. Add. And the calculation has been added to the tree. Double click on the tree. And this is a template of a web opening design in ASDIP Steel. Here in the geometry tab, we enter the information given in the statement of the problem. We know that it's a composite beam, so we select this option here. In the beam tab, we specify the beam size. We know that it's a W18 by 60. Let's click on the steel database to select this size. Select. And the beam has been added to the template. To see graphically what we are doing, let's click on the graph tab. This is the default opening in a beam. We click on the opening tab. Here we specify the size of the opening. We know that the size is 10 by 24. So here we enter 24 here. So it's reflected here in, in the graph tab. Click on the slab tab. Here we enter the information for the concrete slab. We know that it's a 5.5 inches concrete slab on three inches metal deck. The orientation is longitudinal. And the number of studs from the mid span to the support is 30 studs. Click on the reinforcement tab. We're gonna check if this opening at the mid span is to be reinforced. For now, there's no reinforcement specified. Go to the materials tab. This beam is A36, so 36 KSI FY. 58 FU. Concrete slab is 4 KSA F prime C. Plate is also FY36. And this is the well size 316. Let's click on the load tab. We're going to specify a LRFD. For the location of the opening at the mid span, we know that the shear is going to be zero, but the moment is maximum 600 kip feet. These are factored loads. In addition, we know that for this location at the mid span, the opening is eccentric by one inch down, so it's minus one inch, just as shown here. And we have completed all the information given in the statement of the problem. Let's go to the at a glance tab. We can see here that the beam is uh, overstressed by 29%. So obviously we need to reinforce this beam we can go to the different reports and see in more detail the deficiencies, but we can see that the bending capacity is overstressed by 29%. So let's go back to the reinforcement tab. Let's specify, for example, a plate 38 thick, so 0.375. We can see here that even with the reinforcement, we are 15% over. So let's uh, put the reinforcement in at both sides of the web we are still 4% over, so we will increase the thickness of the plate, maybe half an inch, 0.5. And now we are okay, 0.98, that's the ratio. Let's go to the graph tab. Basically the reinforcement will look like that, uh, a bar, 
two inches by half an inch, top and bottom, and at both sides of the web. Will be welded. Let's go to that at a glance. Everything is passing here, all the checks. Let's go to the condense tab. Some more detailed set of calculations, uh, group by topic. Bending capacity. Here is the net reduction area. The plastic moment and then the moment capacity, mm. The shear capacity, here are the calculations for the top T, and then the calculations for the bottom T. Top reinforcement ratio and bottom reinforcement ratio, and finally the maximum shear capacity, vm. The bending interaction, in bending is 0.98, in shear is zero, because we don't have any shear load at this location and the interaction of bending and shear capacity ratio is 0.98. Here we have the reinforcement design. It's plate two by half an inch at both sides of the web. And here finally some design code checks. Let's go to the detail tab. Here a detailed set of calculations step by step with exposed formulas and references to the AISC code bending capacity. Here is the calculation of the maximum bending, mm. Then the shear capacity calculation with the bottom T calculation, top T calculations. Finally, the shear capacity as the sum of both top T and bottom T. The moment shear interaction is less than 1.0. Which hit the design checks and the reinforcement design. Graphically, you can see the beam elevation with the web opening, one inch eccentricity down. The reinforcement is extended six inches each side of the opening. And then the interaction diagram here. We can see here that the load is very close to the limit. The ratio is 0.98, but it's still inside the usable area. Now let's check this beam, but uh, at another section, at the section in the end uh, thirds. Let's go to geometry, go to opening. At that location, we don't have eccentricity, so this is zero. The slab is exactly the same. What is gonna change also are the loads. At that location, we know that the load maximum is 45 kip in shear and 300 kip feet moment. Basically, those are the only changes that are required from the statement of the problem. Here, immediately, we can see that the load is well inside the capacity. Let's go to the Ara Glance tab. Bending capacity ratio is 0.75. Okay. That means that we can reduce a little bit the reinforcement. Let's go to geometry again, reinforcement. Instead of at both sides, probably we can use just at one side and the ratio is 0.84. We can reduce a little bit the reinforcement, maybe 0.375, 0.375, and the ratio is 0.87, maybe one and a half inch plate wide, and the ratio is 0.93. So everything is passing in this design. Let's go to the condensed tab, you can see the bending capacity, 600, Bending shear interaction diagram, 0.93, the ratio. Reinforcement design, everything is passing, including the welding. The maximum shear capacity, VM, is 62.8. And the design checks, everything is passing in this design. Let's go to the detail tab. The bending capacity, 600. Shear capacity, with all the calculations for the bottom T and top T and the total shear capacity is 63 kips. The moment shear interaction, 0.93, less than one, and all the design checks are passing. Finally, the reinforcement design. These are additional checks for one side reinforcement, as in this case, everything is passing. And then the required size at the opening, 0.06, which is less than 3 16 is passing. Finally, some design notes that we can add to the drawings. Graphically, we can see here the beam elevation with the opening and the reinforcement. It's a plate 
one and a half by three eighths, one side only, top and bottom. And the interaction diagram showing the loads inside the usable area. As you can see, it's very easy to design web openings in steel wide flange beams using as deep steel. This type of design includes a number of design checks from the code and the calculations can be time consuming. Using the software, you can complete the design in just a few minutes as shown here. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download the 15 day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.